morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Welcome to my home. I hope you guys are all doing well today. It is a very hot week here in northern Idaho, very smoky. So I hope for those of you that are also in the Pacific Northwest that you are being cautious of your surroundings with the fires and also being cautious with the air conditions. Good morning, Miss Shelley. How are things up in your neck of the woods this year with fires? Are you guys pretty dry up there? Or I imagine things are getting pretty dry. But it's it's been pretty smoky here. I know we've lost 800 some acres um, north of us. And uh, it's just, I don't know if it's just blowing in. There's been little sporadic fires here and there around us. Um, just hoping that people are smart while they're out there on their ATVs and uh, different equipment. Uh, it's getting pretty dry that they may start putting restrictions on cutting firewood around here as well. So just wanted to encourage you guys to be cautious. Um, it is extremely hot, so the guys are going to probably come blasting in at some point. Um, we've had high 90s here this week, and uh, it's 10.30 now, and last time I looked out at the uh, temperature gauge out there uh, thermometer it was uh, like in the mid 90s already so it's getting hot fast I hope you guys are good doing good today I have some great things to share with you Shelly said it says it is very hot also we had lots of rain last month that helped with the forest fires so not too bad yet yeah we're hitting our really dry season I can't remember the last time we had rain and we've had you know some thunderstorms passing through and of course that's not good either when it gets dry because then you have the electrical storms and the lightning strikes that cause fire so just crazy more often than not though it's just the stupidity of people sadly you know leaving their uh, ATVs running in tall grass where you know underneath everything is hot the exhaust is hot and pitching cigarettes and having campfires when they shouldn't be so just have to pray that you know people use their common sense and we don't have too much of that this summer but I have really good things to share with you guys today let me just um, reach out to those um, that I need to notify I have a great tea that I am drinking today and notice I am wearing short sleeves I am NOT like a popsicle my lips are not blue that's because I figured out what was going on which I will share in a minute but let me just share this so what are you guys up to this week? What have been your celebrations? And also, what are you combating right now? What are your struggles? What are the things that are um, causing you to maybe squirm a little bit or that you're having a hard time staying positive with? I would love to know because the more I know what you guys are experiencing, the more I know how to share and to uh, and what to what to touch on. Um, I'm touching on some things this week that are really pertinent to us right now, and I know that because we are dealing with them, and just from talking to others, that there are many of you also dealing with some of the same things. Um, maybe not exactly the same thing, but of similar nature or that are causing the same results. Um, this tea I am drinking, I have to share with you guys. It is, it is fabulous. It is one of the Stash brand and it is um, liquor spice. And I'll tell you what, it has a really good mix of stuff in it. It has um, licorice root, cinnamon, orange peel, star anise, um, vanilla extract, sarsaparilla, orange oil, um, natural cinnamon, clove bud oil, and cardamom oil. And I'll tell you what, it is just so nice and so comforting and so relaxing. And today I am warm, but I decided to make myself some hot tea also. I just had gotten back from, <clears throat> excuse me, from walking the dogs. And because it was so hot, they all went swimming. And um, it was a good, good walk to get good and sweated up, which is good. That's how you detox. So... I'm warmer, but one of the reasons that I'm no longer um, dealing with um, feet and hands that are like ice cubes and uh, popsicles and my lips aren't blue is because I was low on iron. And as a result of being low on iron, I believe that my thyroid was struggling because I was just so exhausted and I was so cold. And through a little bit of self-diagnosis and some research, 
I believe that's what was wrong because as I altered that and adjusted some things, uh, increased my iron and also my iodine levels, I am feeling great and I'm not cold. The mountain man kept saying to me, there is something wrong with you and I believe he was right this time. Good morning, Miss Sharon. Glad to have you joining me. Shelly says, I need to f finish cleaning out my spare bedroom and remove the carpet so that I can get a, a new to us bed. Then we can get, <laughs> it still fights with me. There's got to be a trick to it. I'll have to figure it out. But I know that Shelly is, has been decluttering for quite some time and working from room to room and um, has been making amazing progress. She should be so proud of herself. And um, I know that she uh, was real excited about this project that she's working on. So that always feels good when you're working on things and you are able to get them accomplished. So when you can combat overwhelm and you can keep moving forward and also that you allow your mission to drive you instead of your anxiety, um, we often do so much better. Plus, as you have that progress, and I know Shelly will admit to this, that as you progress through the project that you have set for yourself and you are making progress and you're making headway, that just fuels your fire to continue. And and she has been doing tremendous. And um, Shelly, also tell us how that has changed your, um, your health, um, the atmosphere in your home as far as joy and happiness. I'm sure that has improved just because, as I have been talking about in the past, when you declutter and you get rid of the abundance in your life, we... we this is kind of funny. On the same lines, we have been watching some documentaries on um, old homesteaders, um, people that have lived through the depression, and um, their stories are just so amazing, and it's just really interesting to listen to them and see what they've progressed through. Very inspiring, very encouraging. Um, but what's really funny is as they have gone through the depression, these people tend to be hoarders, and rightfully so, because during that time, um, they had to get by with what little they had and figure out how to utilize what they had to get what they needed. And once they were through that, that mentality did not change. So as things progress and as um, the families continue to grow, that mindset got passed down. And then you've got our current time marketing involved in that and also uh, just that human nature to have what everybody else has. And it just becomes a really toxic situation. Like I've said before, I know people that have garages and basements and attics stuffed full of stuff and they also have storage units, sometimes multiple ones, that they're stashing things in. And that's an expense, it's it's an overwhelm, it's an abundance and it it really does debilitate us and we don't realize it. So. When we are able to progress through that and slowly work our way through that process of uh, removing that clutter and that abundance, it can make a world of difference in our lives. Just want to show you a little bit about um, uh, what I've been up to the last couple weeks. Um, I foraged uh, St. John's wort. And just to show you, this is St. John's wort in oil. It's in um, non-GMO organic olive oil. And notice the color. Okay, and then this is in alcohol. Same thing, St. John's wort in alcohol. So you can see how the oils and the alcohol bring out the different properties of the plant. When you rub St. John's wort between your fingers, the flowers, you will get purple residue. So the alcohol actually brings out that purple color and it's so pretty and um, looks really nice when you utilize this in your salves and different things that you make from the St. John's wort. So this will be a tincture. This will be uh, infused oil. Okay, good morning Miss Tammy. And this is yarrow um, in alcohol. So this will be another tincture that I will have. I am going to leave these um, soaking for about four weeks and I continue to flip those and move those around daily. 
and and then I will strain off the the liquid from these and bottle them in dark glass either in blue or amber glass and store those for winter for the winter months good morning miss Courtney uh, you're never late miss Tammy and good morning miss Courtney <laughs> um, yarrow is an amazing plant it has like 150 medicinal uses uh, is really amazing in the properties that it has and it is all over in our surroundings this is great the one of the biggest reasons that i i am making a tincture right now is to make some salve for the mountain man uh, this is really good for pain and uh, also for healing so i talk a lot about arnica and last week or two weeks ago they were doing concrete and the cement mixer vibrated and was uneven and it uh, flipped. And when he grabbed it while it was still moving, his finger got in the gears. And praise the Lord, mountain boy um, with high functioning autism, sometimes his reactions aren't always the fastest. But um, he quickly unplugged it and thankfully the mountain man did not lose a finger but the potential was there good morning ken good to have you and i saw other people jumping on here shelly says i plan to make my own peppermint extract so i can bake with it awesome very awesome blessings to you too ken and um i didn't have any arnica when the mountain man injured his finger arnica keeps it from swelling and bruising and enables it to heal keeps the inflammation down I had um, Arnica gel, but I did not have the pellets, the homeopathic pellets, which I feel are an extremely essential um, medicinal to have on hand. Um, good morning, Crystal. Glad to have you. Uh, so yarrow is another great replacement. So you can make a salve with that and utilize that as well and put that on areas where you've been injured and... Um, the other good one to have, which we have growing in our yard, is comfrey, um, which I believe it, the name that it was given was bone knit, which is because it's really good at healing bones and um, injuries. So having these things around us, on hand, available to us, and you know, harvesting these when the flowers are blooming versus having to pay another company like uh, Mountain Rose Herbs, which I have no problem doing. They uh, harvest their herbs and have good quality herbs, so that is where I um, direct my attentions when I need something that I can't get, but this just saved me a lot of money. So being able to do these kind of things can really save you a lot of money and also keep you well prepped um, in times of need and when you need them. And like I said, there's 150 plus uses for yarrow and St. John's Word as well has a lot of medicinal uh, uses. So like I've told you guys, as I am out walking around, I am, a, I am photographing plants that I can't identify every day so that I can identify them and I know what's in my surroundings. I am making a, uh, I'm actually using my Evernote and putting the pictures in there and making myself notes. As you write these things down and record them, it helps you to obtain them, which is really important. And um, there's a lot of plants that we are able to identify um, a lot. But that knowledge is priceless and being able to utilize what's in your surroundings is extremely, extremely important. Uh, I know I was going to say something else and the thought just left me. Oh, you guys saw me up at the lake. Some of you may have. Um, on Monday, I was very blessed to be able to leave the homestead and get out and go to one of my most favorite places. I was gifted a mountain bike, pedal bike. To be able to ride around out here on the trails and really hit terrain that I couldn't hit with the bike that I had. Um, my bike I have had since I was 18. I'm now 49. So it's it's had better days. And it wasn't equipped for these this terrain. And I want to be able to ride the mountains this winter and this fall and have my bow attached so that I can go archery hunting as well. Uh, just helps me to cover more ground quietly and uh, it's good exercise. Monday I was by the lake and I got to ride the trail there. I rode 12 miles um, on the lake and then I didn't mention to you guys when I was um, jumping off that the next 
mile I had. It was only a mile up to the guys, but it was completely vertical. And I'm very proud of myself. I stopped three times. Once was to take a picture, and the other two was to get air in my lungs because they felt like they were going to burst out of my chest. But my legs did not scream or bellyache. Nothing else did. And I, the only thing that I mind since riding on Monday are my is my butt from the seat. Thankfully, I put a gel seat on there that I had on my other bike, so it wasn't as bad. But I'm thankful that I've kept myself in good shape and that now I am restrengthening. So that was just a blessing. And I don't know what it is about being by water, but it is just like utopia to me. I just felt so renewed. I felt God just totally surrounding me. And while I was down there, it was like a forager's dream location, which I knew. Um, that used to be an old train track. So people would throw their um, cores to their apples and their plums and their pears and um, different things out the window and they took root. So there's a lot of um, free growing, unsprayed, organic plants and uh, uh, fruit down there. Lots of apples, lots of pears and lots of plums. I also found cranberries and Oregon grapes and lots of um, rose hips. It's just, it was amazing. So. For me, now this year, I'm really, you know, when I'm out, I am, a lot of people just walk or ride at a fast clip. You know, they take some of it in, but they're not really paying attention to their surroundings. I'm more paying attention to my, my surroundings and more in fear of hitting something because I'm not paying attention to everything else. So get out. I can't express that enough to get out and exercise, get out and, and you know, enjoy your surroundings, check your surroundings forage things, learn to forage things. I will be sharing more on herbal medicinals upcoming. I had shared a free class uh, last week or the week before. I think last week was the last day that it was free. So those of you that got in on that free course, that course is going to now be for sale for $290. So that is a huge gift to yourself. When I share these things that are free, trust me, I share them for a reason. Not because I'm affiliated with them necessarily, um, because I know the value behind what is being offered. So enjoy those of you that took part in that. And for those of you that didn't, there will be more to come. Pay attention to the things I'm sharing with you guys. So I asked earlier, what are some things that you are celebrating right now? What are some things that are struggles to you right now? I want to know that because... and and. Understand that our community is a good community of loving, like-minded people. I We are just so blessed to have each other, and I'm just so thrilled at how you guys intermingle and communicate with one another. I'm proud of my prayer warriors. So don't be afraid to share, you know, those things here. It is a safe environment, and you will not be attacked for sharing things. As a matter of fact, what we'll do is break them down because right now um, we are going through some pretty tough stuff, which I will share in a little bit. Um, but I mentioned our prayer warriors and I'm going to jump to that right now because we have some huge, huge celebrations. Um, I have been asking you guys for prayer for Pat Kenny. He is a dear friend of mine, like a father figure to me. I He is just treasured. He holds a very deep place in my heart. He is dealing with cancer. He has been dealing with cancer for quite a few years now. He is on round two of chemo, and actually it's a third round of chemo because he had to stop the second one because his heart was failing. He started a new treatment two weeks ago, and he is doing fabulous. His body is reacting to it, and he has not felt this good in a long time. And it is so encouraging for one to see his face so radiant and also to see him in much better spirits. When you're in a place, a debilitated place for a long period of time, it's hard for it not to weigh on you. Even if you are a positive person, he is a very positive person. I am a very positive person, but he and I both were in places where it got a little tough and you had to really work to see the positive, to not be discouraged, but he is conquering it. He is fighting it. God is blessing him, and I am so thankful. So thank you guys for your prayers. Keep them coming. Now, his son-in-law 
we've been praying for as well. Mark, uh, about three weeks ago, was diagnosed with the same cancer Pat has and um, had to go through surgery for his spine. They found a tumor in his spine. They were afraid of paralysis and praising God that when they did the first surgery and removed the tumor, um, there was no uh, paralysis. In addition to that, they had to do a second surgery where they went through his chest and actually um, put wired cages around his spine because his spine is so brittle and deteriorating as a result of the cancer. Um, they weren't happy when they did that because there wasn't a lot of stability in his spine to attach screws and things to, so it wasn't as secure as they would have liked. And um, I ask you to continue praying there. And he is going to be starting chemo and radiation. And uh, this week I've been following him uh, and, and his journey and uh, keeping in touch with him. And he was out and about. He had to go for some testing or to see his doctor and he got out to the library. So he is walking. He has a brace on his chest to keep his back stable and, and, and uh, just strong. So please continue to pray for him. He's got quite the journey ahead of him. But he is also very optimistic, very positive minded. And guys, you have no idea how powerful our minds and positive thinking are and how far they can carry us. Whether it is sickness, whether it is financial struggles, whether it is marital, no matter what the struggle is that we're going through, no matter what the walk is and the valley we may be in, if you focus on positive thinking, you will be amazed at where you end up and where you stay throughout that process. And again, it's not an easy step and an easy pro process, but it's very much worth it. I'd like to also um, just give this celebration also. I mentioned last week how grim things looked for Martin. Uh, we've been praying for Kim and Martin and their family. Martin had a heart attack, oh, gosh, like 150, 160 days ago, and he has been in a coma ever since. He was jogging with his daughter and had a, had a heart attack. In this coma, he has been radiating and, and displaying things that are causing the medical system to scratch their head. He has been, although in a coma, moving when people move and when they're talking. He responds to people talking. Um, he, he has been responding well and, and, and staying alert and they were they put him in hospice care last last week or a week and a half ago and didn't expect him to live very long his organs were shutting down and kim got notified this week one day that um she was at a volleyball tournament with her children they have seven children and uh you know it's very difficult to play mom and dad and take care of these kids while knowing that your spouse is in such a position and not being able to be there 24 7. so her journey has been really tough, but she's such an inspiration and such a faithful woman. Um, I'm very grateful that Diana connected me with her because she just encourages me deeply. Um, but she got contacted that his vitals were not good, things were not looking good, it looked grim. So she continued through the, the tournament, came outside, and there was just this massive, massive rainbow. And the next morning they were con she was contacted and his vitals were back to normal, he was doing great. So she feels that either God is going to take him, you know, to be part of his, his community in heaven and otherwise he is going to do a very drastic Lazarus uh, resurrection uh, with her husband Martin. And, you know, God is good and we're still waiting on that miracle and I'm just... It's amazing to see how God has been working in their lives. So please keep praying. The list below is long. There are a lot of people on our list. And I just ask that if you have the time to pray for them individually, you know, their circumstances are not written down there. Um, but God knows what their needs are. Or you can pray for them as a whole. But if you guys need prayers, please don't hesitate. The power, power of prayer is immense. We would not be where we are today if it wasn't for your your prayers and the prayers of others and, and our prayers. You know, we've got to keep asking. We've got to keep seeking and we've got to keep trusting. We, you know, from day to day, you never know what our trials are going to be and what we're going to walk into. 
you know, even if you're in a good place, you know there's an underlying, pretty much a given that, that it's going to shift and that there's going to be some hard times. And you know what that's called? Life. It's uncertain. We're not guaranteed or promised perfection. We're not guaranteed or promised a bed of roses. We're just not. Even in God's word, we are not promised that. But we are promised salvation. We are promised everlasting life. And that is something that we all need to hold on to. But the thing that as we go through life that we need to hang tight to with everything we have is our faith and our trust in him. And trust me, guys, it will carry you. It will carry you to immense places. I just, one of the biggest questions I'm asked all the time is how do you stay so positive when things are so tough? And you know, just like you guys, things go up and they go down. You know, things things were pretty good. Things were going fairly smooth. And then our truck had some major, major issues. And thankfully, we had an emergency fund that is depleted, but it we had it. We also got a big job that enabled us to use some of the money, even though that had already been designated elsewhere, towards making sure we had transportation. So that really did hit us pretty good. We are living through our food cash and um, unable to purchase a lot of food. So we are living on what we have and we have been. And it's getting rather low and, you know, it's getting kind of... Um, concerning our circumstances are concerning uh you know our house is on the market god has been moving we've been feeling that and because we trust in him we are living with a great peace even though things are getting really heavy and really um stretched and it's getting late in the year for us to be selling our home and being able to do things correctly before winter flies. We've got to trust his timing and we've got to trust his plan. The other thing is we've got to learn to let go of the things we can't control. So let me give you an example. We are working our tails off. I am writing, I am doing web work, I am writing books, I am writing articles, I am doing whatever else I can do. I'm selling some things, I'm gonna start selling some more things because I keep finding more that I can get rid of, which I'm really grateful for. I don't want it, I don't need it. It just, it just not, it, when it doesn't appeal and it's actually looking at you as something that's just gotta go, it's gotta go. And I know there's purpose in that too. The guys are working on projects that are, are big. The one they're working on right now is a really big project. It's getting down there. It's getting down to the point where the mountain man has some trim work to do, um, a little bit more of the decking to do, a set of stairs to build, and then he's gonna be doing all the railings like he did in here. So we've got probably another week or so on that job. There's not much time for him to be doing anything else. So taking on extra work, they did do that on Monday. They took on uh, some extra work on Monday that helped a friend who has Parkinson's and enabled us to make a little bit of extra money. But they can't do that all the time. We've got to stay focused on our jobs. We have another job lined up shortly thereafter. And we've been very cautious on taking on too many jobs because if this sells, our world is going to be upside down in a matter of a day. So we've got a lot on our hands. So there's nothing more we can do. There's nothing more human, any, there's nothing more human possible for us to do to make a change in our situation. So we could sit here and we could be fearful, we could be panicking, we could be letting it consume us, we could letting, be letting it weigh us down and just be in a woe is me state. But what is that gonna prove? Who is that gonna help? And how is that gonna enable us to keep going? We've gotta give that to God and we've gotta trust his plan and we've gotta give up what we can't control. And that, my friends, is a very hard task for a lot of people, right? How many of you struggle with that? Letting go of the things you can't control and trusting God's outcome and not wanting to take control of it. 
it's really hard. And when you walk through a place like we are right now, most people think we're absurd in having a faith so strong that we're trusting him for the outcome because there's nothing else we can do. We, 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 just like you, have 24 hours. When it's 98 degrees outside, there's no sense going out in the woods and cutting trees or doing anything else to try to bring in more money. It's going to kill us. And, and that's not God's plan. I know that's not God's plan or he would have already taken us. So, in other words, in my opinion, that would be suicide. Plus, you can only do so much work without stressing your body, your mind, your spirit. And that, in turn, will weaken you for what the tasks are that you do need to accomplish. So today's topic is integrity and staying positive when things get uncomfortable. I am a control freak, so I have to fight that. Tammy, I totally get that, Tammy. I used to combat and battle that too. You know, previously in circumstances like this, I would have been feeling very stressed and very weighted and feeling that there was something more I should be doing and or I would take on more. And there were times previously where I worked 36 hours straight without sleep to get web work done so I could keep working on other clients and new work so I could keep bringing in the money. Now tell me that solved anything. That was one of the uh, factors that probably helped put me flat on my back faster than I would have more than likely. And that's where we learn to take better care of ourselves. We learn that that control is in God's hands, not ours. And that when we take ourselves to such foolish lengths, we're just being stupid. There's no easier way to put that. And if you are in those shoes right now, I don't mean to offend, but stop being stupid. For real. I mean, you can only do so much. We are human beings and we have limitations. And when we put our bodies in that level of stress, we start to incur illness and we bring illness on because our body is weakening. Tammy says, I am better than I used to be. Yeah, and you know what, guys? You can't change that overnight. You just can't. It's a, pro it's a process and it's a progress there's a progression to getting to that place. But as Tammy's learning and as I learned, you got to take those baby steps and you got to, and I'm sure you're doing it too, Tammy, is when you catch yourself becoming that control freak, you have to start just noticing it and tell yourself to stop. Okay, stop. I'm doing too much. I got to let it go. I can only do so much. And, and you've got to be aware. The thing is, it's just no different than being out on my bike and checking out the surroundings and what's around me. It's paying attention to what we are doing to ourselves and paying attention to what we are, we are doing. And when you find yourself wearing yourself out and stressing over things you can't control and, and giving it up to God, but then slowly you realize, I gave it to God, but now I got it back. He didn't give it to you. He didn't. You took it back. You gotta let it go. Now, the reason I incorporated integrity into this process is because I read something that really um, screamed at me. It went along with the statement that I always share um, from uh, Todd White that as Christians, when we are squeezed, Jesus should come out. So when we are walking in our faith and we are walking with the integrity that we choose. Through these processes of, in, of going through the hard things, good stuff should start coming out. And again, that's a process. Shelly says you can plan all you want, but life gets in the way. I still make goals, and if it takes longer than I plan, then I have to... Facebook and I are going to have it out soon. I'm going to start fighting. That... That, that see more button does not want to let me see the rest of what you say. So I'm imagining that she's saying there, if it takes longer than I plan, then she has to just deal with it and maybe even redirect. Sometimes we have to redirect our path. 
life does happen. And sometimes we are on a path that we chose, not the one that God chose. So we're, we're stumbling around trying to make all this work and, and we're realizing that we're on the wrong path. Life happens because God's trying to nudge us and redirect us to where we're supposed to be, which is more often than not taking more care of ourselves, slowing down, spending time with him. And those things all suddenly just seem to get taken care of. Have you noticed that? That's why I don't panic anymore. That's why I don't, I don't let life rule. Oftentimes the things we experience in life are the enemy trying to redirect us as well. When we can't control it, you just got to let it go. And I think that's part why I am able to find a peace in our situation. Let me read a couple things to you. Um, establish your core convictions. I like this a lot. This goes back to Daniel. Um, this is Daniel 1.8. Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and the wine. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to go back and kind of explain some things to you. What was Daniel's problem? What was wrong with eating the best food in the country? Most people lived on a meager diet. Daniel was going to have the opportunity to eat literally like a king. Why the hard line? When you dig down into the cultural realities of the situation, more seems to be at stake. A, ba a Babylonian feast was always eaten in honor of the gods. So whenever you sat down to a meal, it wasn't just a dining experience that you participated in, but an act of worship. This food had previously been sacrificed to a pagan god. For a Jewish teenager who took his faith in God seriously, particip participation would mean compromising who he was called to be. By eating their meal, he would be worshiping their god, and for Daniel, that was a bridge too far. It was about compromising his character and that he would not do it. You don't discover your convictions when the pressure is on. You decide them in advance. It is during the good times that you determine what you will or will not do during the hard times. The psalmist said, how can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's Psalms 119, 9 through 11. Victorious Christian living is encapsulated in these three statements. One, by living according to the word. Two, I seek you with all my heart. And three, I have hidden your word in my heart. So you don't discover your convictions when the pressure is on. You decide them in advance. And I wanted to bring that up because Courtney says, have a good day. Need to go and help mom get things ready for the garage sale this Saturday. No worries, girlfriend. I'm glad you got to join me for a little bit. Give your mama a hug and God bless you both. Stay cool today. I know it's hot on the other side of the mountain. Love you. Okay. The reason I brought this up is when we are in hard places. Okay, I'm just gonna use this as an example. A family gets down to slim pickings and they don't have a lot of food. And um, they're in a place where there isn't wild game. Okay, so it gets pretty weighty and it gets pretty scary. And it could cause people to go against um, their convictions and their integrity to get out of that hard place. So let's just say that the weights are so heavy and it is so consuming that they make the decision to steal food, whether it's from their neighbor's garden or from the grocery store or whatever, they start stealing food. Are they walking in conviction? Are they walking in integrity? Are they being squeezed and Jesus is coming out? No. That's a hard place to be in. But it makes me think of, in the Bible, and this all goes together. And, it, you know, this is what I think of when I am working with my food cash and I don't have things to be creative and my meals are having to be um, 
just concocted and maybe not what my guys would be looking for. This is how I'm viewing it. And this is walking in faith. This is walking in integrity and this is trusting with such a faith like there's no tomorrow. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish and he looked up toward heaven and he blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread and the fish to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. Those two fish and five loaves of bread fed 5,000 people. That is incredible and that is amazing. And that's why the word is important for us to be diving into because there's so much truth in it in that God does provide. And guys, if you've been following us, you have got to have been able to see all the blessings that just keep flowing. And yeah, we go from one blessing and hit a hard spot and we're blessed again. But it's because we, and I believe this, is that we are trusting him. We are living in integrity. We are speaking his truths. And we are trying to be a light and a beacon to others that may be going through similar situations because of our transparency. And I know we're reaching people because of the communications we have with a lot of you. Don't give up and don't allow the weights and the pressures of life and the world to cause you to break and walk away from what you know is right. Good morning, Miss Goodren. And Courtney says, we will love you too, and I'll give mom a hug. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, like I said before, if you guys have prayer requests, please list them below. I know people are going through tough things. I know that the walk can be hard. And one of the coolest things is not having to walk these things alone. Guys, you have been such a blessing to us. Just being there and knowing that you guys are praying for us has been such a huge a uh, burden lifter and, and an um, encouragement and inspiration to us to keep doing what we're doing. So I wanna read something else. It goes on these same lines. Stick to your standards, all right? Second Corinthians 7, 2. We have wronged no one, we have betrayed no one, and we have cheated or taken advantage of no one. All right, this is a pretty cool one. In 1893, a, mission, a Missouri minister's son named James Cash Penny graduated from high school hoping to be able to further his education and become a lawyer. Instead, he went to work as a salesman at a dry goods store. Penny believed in honesty, integrity, respect, and hard work in every area of his life, including his work. The hardworking, ambitious young man soon had enough money saved to start his own business, and he chose to open a butcher shop. The business failed, but not because Penny wasn't a good businessman, but because of his integrity. Penny wasn't a good biz... I'm sorry. Penny believed in treating every customer with kindness, fairness, and respect. When he refused to grant special treatment to a certain influential customer, that customer used his influence to force Penny out of business. And we're going to run into those sore losers and those sore people and those people that don't know Christ and those people that are, are going to talk about us behind our backs and bring unfortunate circumstances to our lives. And that's okay. But it's how we stand firm. And what comes out when we're squeezed? So Penny bounced back, though, and returned to the dry good business, working for a chain of stores called Golden Roll, which I thought was really funny with the story in hand that he went to work for Golden Roll. He eventually became a partner in the company and soon opened his own Golden Roll store. Penny earned a reputation for fair pricing and excellent customer service. Several years later, the owner of the Golden Roll sold the company to Penny who then renamed it J.C. Penny. He continued to operate with integrity and kindness and build his company into a thriving business. So the note underneath here is love others today. Treating other people well and refusing to compromise your standards of kindness and integrity has its own rewards. And it does. God will reward you for standing strong and firm in your faith, even when life sucks. Plain and simple. Is that not awesome? Now, I want to just share this with you as well. 
Keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking. Howdy. You guys all done? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's hot as heck out there. I did, I did finish the one load in there. It's all ready to be hung, and then you just need to do the other. Okay, so, sorry. Luke 11, 10. For everyone who asks and keeps on asking receives, and he who seeks and keeps on seeking finds. And to him who knocks and keeps on knocking, the door shall be opened. The basket's right in there. Oh. Okay. Jesus, okay. Jesus encourages us to keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. We need to do these things day in and day out, 365 days a year, so we can keep receiving what we need from God. How many times do we stay awake all night wrestling with our problems and losing sleep over them instead of simply casting our cares upon the Lord and asking Him to meet our needs and then trusting Him to do so? You know, guys, I used to do that. I used to lay awake at night. I used to be consumed by our struggles and by our weights. And then I got sick and then God took over. And I don't have those fears and those worries anymore. I'm not giving up my sleep to foolishness. But I understand that you may be there. And I understand and I remember very well what it's like. It's not a pleasant place to be, but there is great truth in giving him our struggles. And praying without ceasing and praying and seeking and finding. You see through us. I hope and pray you do. How many hours and days have we wasted trying to reason or decide what is best in certain situations instead of simply asking God for wisdom? Our mistake is failing to ask and seek and knock. Failing to trust God, our living Heavenly Father, to give us the good things that, he ask, that we ask of Him. We should humble ourselves under God's mighty hand, knowing that in due time He will bring to pass what is right for us. Our sincere prayer will produce more good fruit than years of our trying to solve our own problems. In Matthew 7, 11, Jesus says, If you then, evil as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good and advantageous things to those who keep on asking him? I promise you God has good and advantageous things for you. Just keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking. So love God today. Lord, I commit to continually asking, seeking, and knocking. How many of you need to do that? Hiya. 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 <laughs> you know, that is the key thing, guys, to keeping your sanity when you're going through the hard things and finding your peace, knowing that you've given it to him and knowing that he is going to take care of it. And I know you guys may need to jump off of here. I know that it's a busy time of year, but I'm going to keep going because there's purpose in what I want to share today, and you can always pop back and watch the replay. But I want to share this. This was a blessing that was gifted to me this week by the mountain boy, Austin. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Austin was helping our friend get things ready for the trash, and this happened to be in the trash box. So this is is Love Out Loud, and it's by Joyce Myers. It's a 365-day devotional, and that is what I'm reading from today. And I have been tremendously blessed by this every day since Monday. And what is other people's trash is other people's treasures. I was grateful for this and thankful that he thought of me. He saw God's word on the on, and, and uh, God's information on the front of it and knew that right away, regardless what it was, I would enjoy it. So, <laughs> I'm very thankful. So now, are you set up to be upset is the next one. And this plays a huge role in things. How do I stay positive in the hard things? Because of my mindset and because of how I think and how my mind now works. It was a, it was a process and it's a, progr a progressive process. Thing to change your mind. The mountain man can attest to that because I know that through some of the things that I have retrained myself in, he has started doing the same and is seeing the benefits. Yeah, you know. <laughs> no, I, he loves me. <laughs> Not to mention he's stuck with me. <laughs> I guess somebody has to be. <laughs> oh. 
If we wouldn't well, both, yeah. if we wouldn't both be a little bit like that, I think that our circumstances would be a lot harder. But we find humor in the heart, and that's another part of it. You know, sometimes you just can't make the stuff up. It's hard. It's ridiculous. It's crazy sometimes how one thing flows into the next, and and. You know, when you're sharing your stories with people that, you know, you think, gosh, they must think we're nuts. You know, but it's humor is good for the soul. It's also good for your character. And it's also good for getting through the hard stuff. So instead of crying, laugh. All right. So are you, are you set up to be upset? Psalms 33, 1. Rejoice in the Lord. O oh, you, righteous, upright, I'm sorry, they are adding different words in here, and I hate when they do that. Um, Rejoice in the Lord, O oh, you, righteous, for praise is becoming and appropriate for those who are upright. All right, do you ever wish your life would just change? We kind of laugh when we heard this one. Uh, yeah, like we wish our house was sold like yesterday, but it hasn't, so, you know, you move on. Sometimes our lives do change quickly, but sometimes they don't. And we have to stay faithful, thankful, and positive in the, mind, in the midst of things we wish were different. How many of you are surfing, you know, the heart and wish things were changing? Well, in wishing that things were changing, sometimes you can make things harder on yourselves. How do you approach every day in every situation? Do you decide ahead of time that you won't be happy or peaceful if you don't get what you want? That's why when you focus on what you want, when things are good, you want happiness, then you keep happiness even through the heart. And that, there is a way to do it. It's just looking on him and being thankful. People think in these ways quite often. I have heard people say things like, if it rains tomorrow, I'm not going to be happy. When we think thoughts such as this, we are preparing ourselves to be unhappy and to lose our peace and joy before we even have a problem. And it's true, because our brains hear us say that, so they're preparing for us to be unhappy. It's a truth. It is a complete truth. So instead of setting ourselves up to be upset, we need to think and speak things like, I really hope the weather is nice tomorrow, but my joy is on the inside of me, so I can be happy and have rest in my soul no matter what kind of weather we have. And you don't have to be that extensive. You can just say, I really hope the weather's nice tomorrow. Because if it's not, it's not. But it doesn't mean it has to change anything. The way we approach our lives makes all the difference in the quality of life we can have. When we, can fix, when we can't fix life, let's remember that we can fix our approach toward it. Make up your mind that you will be happy if you get your way today or if you don't. So the end statement is, love God today. Lord, today I will use my thoughts and words to set myself up for peace and joy. So how many of you make the decision to choose to view things in a positive nature and, and to just accept your circumstances as they are? They are what they are. It is what it is. And more than likely, you can't change them. So you can choose to be miserable along with your circumstances or you can just choose to kind of move yourself out of your own circumstances. We are living in our circumstances, but I'm choosing to do things in my day that give me happiness and joy. And focusing on the blessings and, and what God is going to do. Like I said, he took five loaves of bread and two fish and fed 5,000 people. And I'm worried because my cash might be getting a little low. You know, it's, it's, it's perspective, guys. And it's, it's learning to, like I said, focus on the good. Now, part of that, too, is learning to um, take care of yourself. We talked about that in the beginning, in that we try to push through, try to do things ourselves, try to make things happen. We kill ourselves. Working 36 hours straight with no sleep, there's no sense in that. So here's 13 steps to self-care. Huh? What's wrong with that? It's not healthy. Oh. And then you get crabby, and then I got to handle you gets crabby. <laughs> I hear you. I know. He's chewing or he would have had things to say. I got lucky. <laughs> anyway, 13 steps to self-care. One, 
If it feels wrong, don't do it. Integrity, right? Two, say exactly what you mean. Three, I don't need you to add any input there. Three, don't be a people pleaser. Four, trust your instincts. Five, be kind to yourself and loving, I'm gonna add. Six, don't be afraid to say no. We've heard that before, right? Also, don't be afraid to say yes. Say no to the things that you know are gonna give you a struggle, but say yes to doing something that will give you joy. Eight, unfollow negative people on social media. I have that problem all the time. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to get on Facebook. I gotta look for him, <laughs> which is a good thing. And I think back to the people, you know, the pioneers. You know, it certainly wouldn't have said unfollow negative people on social media, but it might have said stay away from negative people in the, in the general store. Or in church, even in church, there are negative people, you know, so you got to think of where they were gathering. So whatever, whatever pertains to you, stay away from the negative people, the negative talk, the negative, the, the gossip and all that other baloney. Nine, never give up on your dreams. Never give up on your dreams. Ten, never speak bad about yourself. We've been correcting that, right? I hope so. I've been working with you guys on that. Eleven, stay away from the drama and negativity. Amen to that. I cannot stand drama and I cannot stand negativity. I feel it. I can feel it when I'm in it and I just need to walk away. 12, let go of what you can't control. And 13, allow yourself to be happy. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to do something that gives you joy and pleasure. It's okay to do something fun while you are going through a hard time. What, what are you supposed to do? You know, if you have done everything that you can possibly do and there's nothing more that you can do to change the circumstances, situation that you are in, why should you sit there and be miserable? Do something constructive. Do something fun. Take care of yourself. Now, this is the other, which I feel, really important part of this whole aspect of this. And another way for you to stay positive when things are getting uncomfortable. Things are uncomfortable here. You know, um, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure with the seasons changing, um, with food getting low, with uh, no finances. You know, it's, it's tough. It's tough. But this is one of the greatest things that keeps us going. And one of the things that we are greatly blessed with is to have true friends. And, you know, the ones that are not true friends drop off. We've experienced that. They just disappear. Uh, they think that maybe our circumstances are, are, is drama. And you know what? I hope that you guys don't feel that way. And I hope that when we share it, it doesn't sound that way. It's just life. It's what we are experiencing. And as we are walking through it, I know there are other people. But, you know, I, I don't know what, other, what people around you choose to feel and think when you're going through certain circumstances. Maybe they can't handle the, the heat and the uncomfortableness that we're in, so they just disappear. I don't know. But a true friend and those that are of value, which typically don't make up more than two handfuls, because when you find them, they are such a blessing, such a, uh, a pearl. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's an amazing thing when you have them, and we are blessed to have them. And, and so thankful. And I shared this with some of them this week. But when you're going through the hard times, this one's called Friends in the Woods. And I thought this was just so perfect. I was reading this along the trail on Monday. And, you know, we are in the woods, and we are blessed with such tremendous friends that lift us, encourage us, inspire us, and pray for us, and check on us. And, you know, when you're going through the hard, when you have that, that is also one of the greatest blessings next to God's faithfulness and grace and mercy and Him holding us up is to have these kind of people in our lives. So if you don't have them, I pray that God blesses you with some because we are blessed with quite a few. So um, 1 Samuel 23, 16, Jonathan went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand. 
I think this story is just so fabulous. It really touched me. The first Amer African American to play Major League Baseball was Jackie Robinson. While trying to break through baseball's color barrier, he faced insults and abuse in just about every stadium. One day as his home stadium, at his home stadium in Brooklyn, he made an error and the fans immediately turned on him. While they jeered, Robinson just stood there at second base, humiliated. At that point, shortstop Pee Wee Reese ran over, stood beside him, put his arm around him, and together they faced the crowd. Within seconds, the fans grew quiet. Years later, when Robinson was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame, he said, Reese's arm around my shoulder that day saved my career. Jesus knew Peter would strike out and deny him, yet he extended grace to Peter even before it happened. Here's what he told him, when you have come back to me, help the others. <laughs> when God restores you, you'll want to reach out to others with his love. It will be as natural to you as breathing. You'll live by the scripture, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong for your God is coming to save you. In scripture, Jonathan went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand. When you feel lost in the woods, you need a Jonathan. That's when you prove the truth of the old adage. In prosperity, our friends know us, but in adversity, we know our friends. They're the people who turn to you in times of trouble. So if you think you'll ever need such a friend, be one. In prosperity, our friends know us, but in adversity, we know our friends. You know, guys, I can't help but be touched by that. We have so many beautiful people surrounding us, many of which are you guys out there. And uh, it's just amazing. You guys always have the right things to say when we need to hear them. And it's nice to be there for you guys when you are in need as well. And that's what we're called to do. We are called to do that. So, you know, knowing each other's circumstances, whether it sounds like drama or not, I think when somebody's truly sharing from their heart and they're sharing what they're experiencing, that's not drama. That's hurt and that's life and that's their story. I tell you all the time that everybody has a story. Each of you do. I know you do. Many of you share them with me and I'm so blessed by that. And, you know, when you're feeling lost in the woods, sometimes, like for many of us, we aren't right next to each other. We're over the mountain. We're a couple hundred miles away. So we can't be there to see exactly what you're experiencing. But when you have a friend in these circumstances that you know you can reach out to and share something in, in, in faith and entrust somebody with your, your circumstances, that's not drama. That's, that's just being, being yourself and for us, it's being able to love back on you and love on you. So I really hope that you, you know, you take this to heart and, and realize, you know, that when we are going through the hard things and being there for one another and knowing even just that you're not alone, that there's somebody else going through stuff, that could be so uplifting and there was something in here that really touched me that I wanted to touch on. You know, it said on here that Jesus knew that Peter would strike out. You know, we're all gonna make mistakes, we're all gonna sin, we're all gonna fall short. God knows that, and that's the importance of praying and asking forgiveness, but seeking him and and knowing that he's going to take care of us. He knows, he knows our story before it even happens and as we walk through these stories we build on our integrity and we we build on our abilities to 
find peace through the storm and find peace through the hard and find peace when it's uncomfortable. And that's all through our walk with him. And, you know, many people can turn their backs on that and, and say that there is no God and, and say that it would make no difference. But I challenge you, that what if I'm right? And what if there is eternal life? And what if what he promises is true? And what if he will carry us through these hard places and that he will take us to the top of the mountain and it may require us to go a different route, but he'll get us there. You know, I choose not to live life questioning that. I've seen his hand. I've seen his miracles. I know that he's going to work a big one for us. And he's going to work a big one for you guys too. So what I want to encourage you today is to stand tall and to stand strong and to plant your feet with integrity. So that when you are in a hard place and you are squeezed, Jesus does come out. And that you don't weaken. And that you're not afraid. And also don't be afraid. We're going to talk about that more. Don't be afraid to share your testimony. You know, if you think about it in the books of the Bible where David shares his weaknesses and Abram shares his weaknesses and, and they share their stories of how horribly they sinned, yet God lifted them and made them into these big, um, huge icons, even though they sinned. Our testimonies play a valuable role in reaching other people and also encourage you know when you think of your testimony and you really focus on what God has done it helps you to realize what he's carried you through and oftentimes that there's no limitations to what he will carry you through in the future it's just a matter of trusting so please don't be afraid to share your testimonies and your stories and I know what else I wanted to say I, I have been confronted recently in a, in a conversation where, and it wasn't directed at me, it, it was directed to Christians in general. That as soon as something's said, Christians feel like they've got to share their story and they've got to, um, as she put it, um, uh, how did she, what were the words she said? But basically, that we try to uh, shove our religion down people's throats. And, and that is a perspective issue because my perspective on that was, but that's not it at all. I, I'm not trying to shove my religion down your throat. I'm celebrating and sharing my story with you and, and what God has done in my life. I, I by no means feel that you know, that's what you have to do I know how it has blessed me, and I know what I will gain as a result of it, but it is, it is our excitement and our joy and our testimony and our, uh, wh where we've come, what has happened, the miracle we've just experienced. It's just the perspective of, of how it's received, and that always just cracks me up because I see that in a lot of conversations on Facebook, which actually has been keeping me from Facebook because of all the drama and the craziness in how people perceive and interpret things and and how somebody takes somebody's excitement and joy and turns it into negativity and shoving something down somebody's throat so that's why i want to encourage you guys even more to view life in general in its whole in a positive nature and don't be so quick to assume that what somebody is saying to you is meant negatively. Uh, we can shortly short change ourselves by doing that, and others for that matter. Our testimonies are an important role, part of what we, what our story, our story, and being able to show, share with people and show people what where we started and where we are now. And, and that can be sometimes extremely tremendous to hear some of the incredible testimonies out there on the internet. You know, there's a lot of drama and a lot of garbage out there, but there's a lot of really amazing stories out there too. And I just want to encourage you guys, stand with integrity,
focus on the positive, focus on your blessings and, and take everything to God. If you're going through the hard and the uncomfortable right now, give it to God. Good morning, Charles. I'm just getting ready to say a prayer for us all. I hope you're doing well today. Charles has had some great celebrations too. He's had some positive things happening um, and test uh, results with his health. So praising God for that too. But guys, all of you on the prayer list are in our prayers. Keep praying for everyone. You guys have been seeing the positive, positive results from our prayers. Keep praying for Martin. I want to see that miracle. I want to see that man come alive, open his eyes and come out of that coma. And I want to be able to hear him say that he's heard everything that's been spoken around him all these months. And that's what brought him to, to step out of that miracle and as well as God leading the way. There's so many miracles. Pay attention to them, guys. All right, I'm going to say a prayer. Papa, Jesus, I am just so thankful for what you are doing in our lives and what you are going to do. You know, I'm giving you the glory before it even happens. I know that you have a plan for us. I know that you know our story. I know that you are going to work amazing miracles in your timing. And I am trusting you with that. I am having peace with that today. And I am not focusing on our hardships and the uncomfortableness. I am focusing on the good and on the mighty things that you're going to do. I am also celebrating greatly the miracles and the incredible healing that you have been offering in Pat and in Mark and Charles and how you are working in Martin it's amazing. I know there's a lot of ups and downs there, but it's very clear that your hand is involved and you are certainly making a lot of people shake their head there, especially the medical community, which is awesome. They need to know that your hand is just as important in everybody's lives as theirs may be. And I just ask that you give everybody the strength and the courage to keep working on their projects and to keep succeeding. Uh, with Shelly and Tammy and Diana and many of the others out there that may not have shared their, their successes, but how they're progressing and Kelly and, and Courtney too, you know, we are celebrating how you've worked in that young lady's life too, with healing her cancer and making tumors smaller. And I know you're gonna make the one that was lingering disappear and how you've given her the ability to uh, have greater short-term memory in just such a short time. Your hand is present everywhere and, and just give everybody the courage to keep going when they're in the uncomfortable and in the hard and as they're working through their goals and, and their plans and their dreams as you keep allowing them to progress and celebrate and and be encouraged and inspired by their progress just be in each and everyone's lives help Shelly with her health issues and just uh, help heal her and direct her and Lord just be with everybody on our prayer list be with Mona and Ken and uh, Mark and Pat and just continue to be with those that are in need and be with uh, Roger and Wendy just help them as well and Lord just guide and direct every one of our lives give us direction and guidance and may we just shine for you and just thank you for what you're gonna do and just be ever present in everyone's lives I love you and I thank you in Jesus holy and precious name amen so guys I hope this was encouraging for you I hope this helped you in some way today and uh, just keep us in your prayers uh, got a lot going on here and a lot shaking and we know God's going to shake things up and turn things upside down here and just appreciate your prayers, appreciate your friendship and appreciate your love and encouragement and inspiration and just being a part of our community. So, oh, and before I forget, guys, I've talked to you about um, staying organized and keeping a journal and um, I want to mention a company today and I wanted to show you a little bit of something I've been doing and this is what encouraged me to head in that direction. Um, told you about being creative. 
I've started drawing in my daily journals. Uh, you know, I was trying to do that separate. There's something I started yesterday that I haven't uh, finished yet, but every day I'm doing some kind of doodle in my journal. And I am journaling, and that has been something that I always struggled with, but it is now a daily habit. And I also have things that I need to keep track of, and I told you that I do a lot of my things on the devices, but I'm really finding that I love doing this journaling. It's nice to be able to look back, and I was looking for a new journal for 2020. And it's scary to think we are that close. We're already in August. It's really scary to me where this year went. But a veteran-run business has started a Christian planner. And it has encouragement in it. It has blank pages for, for drawing and, and notes. It has the calendar in there and a, day, uh, a place to, to journal every day. And uh, I thought it was a great company to contribute to and to help get going. And I wanted to just mention it to you guys. You can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Christian Planner. They just brought out their 2020s and they are taking pre-orders. So you can use that link to get in there and do so. They have a variety of colors. But if you are the pen and paper kind or you're starting to journal um, and you also like to do uh, have the calendar, it's a week at a glance with a month at a glance also in there. So it enables you to really keep track of your year, but also to keep track of your, your journaling and your uh, daily devotionals and so forth. So I thought it was kind of one that has everything all in one. It also has a spot to keep track of your daily habits. So with everything that I've been talking about this year, I really feel it is the perfect piece for those that enjoy doing pen and paper. And I am wanting to keep track of things in a pencil and paper kind of manner because I believe that things are going to start enveloping and opening for us and things are going to start getting really fast. And I want to be able to look back over my year and see when we started building our new homestead and packing this one up or whatever the case may be. So anyway, that was my share. And I also wanted to ask you to join me over at um, our community. It is treyerwilderness.com slash community. We are really going to start expanding on that. And um, I would love to have you guys join me there. So check us out over there. And um, yes. All right. Tammy's got to run. Love you. Have a blessed afternoon. You too. And guys, I got to run as well. Thank you for joining me. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you next Wednesday at Standard Time, 1030 Pacific Standard. So guys, take care. Love you all. God bless.